Hi friends, welcome back to the fam to the library, to the family of the library or librarian. I have with me today author Amy Oliveira, and I'm super excited to be chatting with you because I literally just fangirled over your book <laughs> Keepsake, and you have a plethora of other things. So now I get to ask you some Hi, questions. Thank you so much for having well, me. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm oh hard, my God. honestly. I'm like, this is my first, my first author chat, and I'm like, I know, I know. I have a habit of like putting people on a pedestal. And I'm like, yeah, do. don't do it. Okay. I'm a mess, and you're gonna see, you're gonna have the pleasure of going in this mess with me. So you, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my first question is like, what got you into writing? think I don't remember a time that I wasn't writing I don't I don't have a, okay. a moment because like I remember mm -hmm. learning how to write and I was in school and I was around six years old and then I needed to do like do a sentence with the word whatever I think was armadillo um it was tattoo because I'm from Brazil uh, so it was in Portuguese so they were like needed to and I wrote two pages and my teacher got really cross because she was like, I said a sentence. <laughs> so I just remember those kind of stuff. I don't remember. I remember when I used to write stories when I was nine years old. Like, I don't I never don't think I ever had the moment of like, oh, my God, like getting an author and getting excited was something that I was always doing. And I remember begging my mom to teach me how to read before the school did I just had this very I was sure that the adults was hiding <laughs> they were hiding something <laughs> from us <laughs> and, there is something suspicious like, going what? on and she's like but you're gonna go to school and you're gonna learn and I'm like but you know can she just tell me and she didn't she wouldn't so when i start reading and writing like i was just i was so excited um so no i don't have like this it's just uh, was always there i knew that's what i was going to be doing which is i don't know some sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad like you know <laughs> yes yeah overachiever <laughs> so <laughs> i'm just gonna throw that in there just a little bit of overachiever <laughs> just switch um so you've always been writing so have you ha always had ideas for stories and they've kind of grown or do they come and go uh, no I think they're always they're always there like so I uh the other I think it was 2022 like I just stayed longer since I immigrated to Ireland I was not in Brazil for longer than like two weeks so in 2022 I was there for three months so I actually really had a look in my childhood room and there was like this big chest um, of poems and stories and sometimes story ideas and I was literally like my husband was uh in a bed and was like what you doing this is it's making me sneeze and I was like I don't know I'm just looking if there's a jam here <laughs> like you know <laughs> like some ideas like yeah. I took a few things because there was just stuff that I would like oh my god a story of this 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 and I never had the opportunity to finish so I was like no there's like a good sometimes it was just like random tropes or random like one word mm -hmm. idea and they were just there and I was like I'm gonna bring this because who knows <laughs> yeah like know. maybe it was like my 15 year old self knew what was going on like you know uh, so I think the ideas were all there mm -hmm. they they change a lot and then that was um that's really funny because like when we all every like I feel that we all people who write uh, like to read we have a story on us so mm -hmm. every reader, we all like write a little bit as a hobby. And 
it was a hobby for a long time, as is this with many of us, until I was like, oh, no, that's what I'm going to do. And then it's it's funny because your stories, suddenly you need to think, like, how I'm going to market them. Like, it needs to be industry. Like, I, I need to be like, am I going to be a romance author? And I'm going to be a fantasy romance. Like, you need to put yourself in a box and... Mm-hmm. And it, you need to do it because, like, you need to market, you need to, there's algorithms, there's Amazon, like, there's a million reasons. So it's really funny to think that, like, uh, there was a lot of stories that I'm like, oh, my God, that's, like, you know, that would be, like, pure fantasy. That's something that I would never do now. Mm-hmm. And, like, but when you're just, like, when you're a teenager, you can do whatever you want. So it's, like, there's a freedom there, right, oh, yeah. that you're just, like, whatever comes comes yeah. to me it's it's happening i'm gonna put on paper and now i need to actually think like you know mm-hmm. i have i know quite a few authors that have a couple pen names and use their real names so that they can have a branch in each genre and i'm like that's a lot I'll to listen. keep up with i do i <laughs> have i write under scarlet rays for uh for monster romance mm-hmm. and I I have one book out, one novella that was part of an anthology. So, and then there's a book coming out now this year because it's already pre-order. And I'm going to tell you that I'm already like, I'm pulling all the, the social media. I'm just going to be like, I, I, I talked to myself and I said, I'm just going to put Amy in writing as a Scarlet as well. And just going to do all my marketing <laughs> through like one thing. Even though, like, it's what smart for Amazon for you to have two names because you don't want to confuse readers when they're looking for one thing because there is people who doesn't like contemporary and loves monster and there's a lot of contemporary uh, readers that won't read non-human. Oh, yeah, yeah so it. it's like it is yeah. for that side of business. It's smart that I have these two names separate, but, like... I, it's so much work and i thought i i know now like you know i know instagram i understand ads like i learned so much in the last years like blah blah, blah. no it's so much <laughs> it's like, yeah it's it's, it's it a is. lot and i was like now and i'm like i i understand why companies have like mm-hmm. teams for it because just for myself wanting to do even just a bookish platform and then launching the podcast it was like i have to have a separate everything i'm like nope it's not my happening my husband says that a lot yeah my so husband i can't says to me a lot of times like you need to breed and remember you are a whole company because sometimes you're like i need to do this 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 and you get overwhelmed because it's a lot and then he's like, yeah, but you need to give yourself grace and remember that, like you said, there's co- companies have a whole team to do what we do. Like, mm-hmm. it's insane. Like, we need to give yeah. ourselves, like, grace and be, well, I'm doing a something here. <laughs> and honestly, I don't have the Instagram algorithm figured out at all. <laughs> it changes so much i'm like i know mm. and it's so like it was something when i started like i think it was 2000 like a 20 month when i start my my instagram it was a different thing that was working and then i learned that mm-hmm. and i was like confident and then change and change and change and i'm like i can't keep up i'm just gonna you know what i'm gonna be here and readers are gonna find me <laughs> and i just want to be active enough so people know what i'm doing and know they they can contact me that i will respond to dms even if i take my time like i am here but like i don't know i have no idea next week it's a different mm-hmm. thing i found out the other oh my god i found out the other week there was like hashtags they are shadow ban and then makes so much sense because sometimes I get like there's posts that I'll get like it reach 50 people. And I'm like, how is that mm-hmm. happening? Like why I just post this and only reach 50 people? And then there's apparently I'm doing something wrong because I'm putting some hashtag that is shadow ban. And I'm like, should I learn which ones are? 
or should I just pick a nap? <laughs> nope. I just rotate them. I have a list. I had a, for a while there, I had a hashtag mm. generator for all of my platforms. And I would just put in like bookish tags and I would copy the 30, the 15 to 30 that were the least oh. used and use those because they're growing. And then after I see the ones that yeah. I like, I'll switch them out. So like the other 15 to 30 that have been popular for a while, I'll switch them. Like one post I'll do, the less used, the other Smart. post. Smart. Because you can see, yeah, you can see on the hashtag whenever you use the generator how many times it's been used. Smart. And like TikTok mm -hmm. shows you when you're putting in, they show you how much it's been used. So I alternate big ones, the small ones, big ones, small ones. That's really good. I, when I started, I also had a girl doing my marketing because I had no idea how to do anything. And mm -hmm. I was like just putting books out and hiding under my desk. Like, so I needed someone to be like, this is, this what you do. Like she introduced me to Canva. So like I used, like I used to have her. And then when I was confident enough, I started walking on my own. But yeah, but like she would just give me a list and say, this is your hashtags. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what a dream. <laughs> but then I cannot go back. Right. Like I can go back and check the hashtags because that was three years ago. So that's not yeah. going to work, you know? Um, so mm -hmm. yeah. So Instagram, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and TikTok, I don't. Mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. TikTok is something else. Threads is apparently <laughs> something. I'm not even quite sure still how it works. I know how Twitter works, so I have a brief recollection of how to use threads. But tw mm. Twitter X is Yeah, feral. they say that it's a very toxic, isn't it? It's so toxic and just <gasps> filthy. Yeah, because everything's allowed, isn't it? But that that is the only thing mm -hmm. because I always heard how bad it was like Twitter and I was like, no. And I mean but mm. it can okay. It, they're starting to run hashtags so you can join little mm. communities but if you're not extremely extremely careful about who you're following and intentionally like if i'm not intentionally following um and liking posts from people who are posting things about books i'm gonna start seeing mm. other random stuff because they're pushing it for their algorithm and usually it's things that have gotten really popular because somebody said something that was really just yeah. unhinged and it yeah. blew up and there yeah. are a bunch of reactions. And then I'm like, I just, I'm seeing a random news post or I'm seeing a random post about somebody being upset over something extremely controversial. Mm, that's I don't, not happening. I don't watch the news <laughs> for a reason. That's what hap that's happening on like, listen, I don't use much Facebook, but I actually managed to do something that was like curate my Facebook. Like I unfollowed mm -hmm. all family members. You know, they are still my friends, but <laughs> I unfollowed because I was like, I don't care yeah. what Auntie Whatevs is doing right now. Um, you know, she has my number, she can text. So I just unfollow all the family and then I'm only in bookish groups. And I am as my civilian name so I can actually enjoy and you know ask for recommendations and give recommendations and like I have I was talking actually when I'm alone the last the life that we had on Monday and I was mm -hmm. like this is actually my thing I love going to a, a group when someone asks something wild like I want a recommendation with this and this and this and I have it and I'm like oh I read a book like this. I love it. So I like, I did that so perfectly on Facebook. And it was like, so my husband's like, ah, Facebook, this is, this, this. I was like, Facebook is great for me because it's just like book is book, 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 book. It's only book community. And then I get into my outer page and then I would like, you know, talk to people and that would be like work time. But as my personal time, it was just mm -hmm. like, I can ask here, whatever, like, you know, uh, 
without the weight of being like, she's reading this as this author. I just want to read something. And mm -hmm. oh my God. And then Facebook started pushing stuff that I was not following. And then suddenly I was mm -hmm. like, what is this? What is this? It was just like, uh, suggested, suggested. And I was like, I don't want your suggestions. There's a reason I did this. <laughs> and no. I got so angry because I had the perfect page. I was like the only one still using Facebook because I'm like, I found a way, guys. This is like, I, it's been it. months since I saw anyone's update on their lives. Like sometimes when one will call, I was like, did you see whoever pictured? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> Yeah, so it's doing that as well. And I'm getting really angry because it's also suggested. It's very confused who I am. Like sometimes there's very like he's sexist mm -hmm. memes. Uh, so it's not just what's blowing up. It's like, why are you suggesting this to me? What's happening? So yeah, so it's very upsetting yeah. right now. <laughs> I think it's really good for you to have that separation. And really for anybody, um, this is just, we're going to stray for a moment. It is okay to cut people off if it is for the best of your 100%. own mental health. Blood, family or not, your mental health above everything else. If I'm cutting off my mama, I'm mm -hmm. cutting off my mama. It is what it is. If I'm cutting off my grandmother, mm -hmm. I'm cutting her off. Uh, Bye. Absolutely. I believe that and so much. And like we've been through four years of hell with politics in Brazil, with Bolsonaro, that was a far right. And so I got a lot of people in my family. And my mom was like, because politics? I'm like, yep. <laughs> like, I don't want to. Yep. I don't need to. And in the end, like, I truly believe that family is the people that want to have a relationship with you and sometimes that's friends there is a lot of people like cousins and my mom and dad there's a lot of people that are blood related mm -hmm. to me that want to be part of my day-to-day -day life and i love them but like it empty whatevs like <laughs> you know <laughs> it's gonna be okay you know yeah well a hundred percent my mental health <laughs> first no way and that's where that's I'm a hundred percent in the same place of I have more friends and like cousins and extended family that are not technically mm -hmm. immediate family that are actually closer to me and that I speak to more regularly, um, that are a little bit more part of my life than some other yeah. family members, some because they have to pass and parents just because that's the way it is. Um, I have more friends that I've made online through the bookish community that have become my family mm -hmm. than any, any It's crazy, else. isn't it? Like when uh, I went to it Book is. Bonanza last year and it was crazy mm -hmm. to be in Dallas. I've never been in America. So, uh, and I went to Dallas and I had so many friends mm -hmm. and it was just very confusing. <laughs> know so many people <laughs> this is wild <laughs> of all the places for you to go for the very first time being in america it was, it was dallas, dallas texas I, I was like this is wild when i got the invitation it was the first and it's a big it's a it's a huge convention that a lot of mm -hmm. authors are ears trying to get into and um, so when I got the invitation, I'm like, I don't think I have a way. Like, I am saying yes. I don't know how, if it mm -hmm. even makes sense, because it's not like I'm a huge author. And then you go and you think about your tickets and then like, it gets little like, am I going to sell enough to cover all the expenses? But I'm like, I need to go. Like, mm -hmm. this is a huge opportunity. So I, and then I was just telling my husband, I was like, I think I'm going to Dallas. And he's like, what? <laughs> where <laughs> and i was like five months pregnant <laughs> i was just like he's like excuse you <laughs> excuse you you're going <laughs> where but yeah that was the first place and i'm going again <laughs> and it's uh, literally it's the <laughs> only place i ever been in america <laughs> and i keep coming back <laughs> that's 
not too far from me, oh, actually. Yeah. It's really long. It's two oh, and a half hours. Good. But I heard that they weren't doing Book Bonanza. Uh, this is, next year is the yeah, last this one. this year. Now in June is the last one they announced. Yeah, it's really sad. Yeah, because we're all like kind of. I was I was thinking, but in a way, like I was thinking about it, like maybe I need to go someplace else. Like I need to go in other conventions, and I need mm-hmm. to be very selective. What I go, like I, you know, it's a big trip for me, so I can like, um, go in, in loads of places. So I was just like, I was like, yeah. maybe I should go in a different place, and like you know, just. America is so big, so there's like completely different readers that's gonna be over there. It's not gonna be there. Like, you know, mm-hmm. you reach different people. Uh, but it was very difficult for me to let it go <laughs> because it's such a big convention yeah. and created yeah. so yeah, many huge. opportunities for me. So I was like, I'm gonna, oh my god, how I'm gonna say no the next year? And they and they announced that was over, and I was like, well. That's the universe mm-hmm. telling me then. Like, <laughs> it. Mm-hmm. You know they have they have um, Wild and Windy, which is I believe in Chicago, mm-hmm. Illinois, and then they have Readers Take Denver. That's a huge one. That's in I Denver, Colorado. was invited to Readers Take Denver last year. I don't think I made it this year, but yeah, but like you know, I wish like I could go in many. Because you just got so excited. Yeah. And I loved meeting readers for a while. Like, it was so, you no know, one. I always liked conventions for, well, you know, mm-hmm. before it wasn't the worst person on the planet. I used to love going to Harry Potter conventions. <laughs> good times. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was a good times. That, so I did that for years. And, and it was so mm-hmm. good because like you meet people that you naturally, like we went and we like don't know anyone and you just mm-hmm. make friends because you have just one thing in common. So we were like, oh, we'll go to Doctor Who next, uh, next year. And we like really want to find one in London for Doctor Who. And we're like, where are we going to go? Blah, blah, blah. And, and then that happened. And I loved so much because like I said, I knew everybody. <laughs> I was like, this is home, you know? And everybody, and sometimes I was yeah. just looking yeah. at someone who was like, I don't know where. And then I realized that I was watching someone's video. Like, you know, you're in book talk. And I was yeah. like, do I know that person? I don't think I know her. She didn't say hi. Uh, and then you just realize <laughs> that you watched that person before. So it's like, you do feel like home. It was amazing. Yeah, and the, well, and they probably didn't say hi because so many of us have anxiety <laughs> out the wazoo and for some reason can't speak to one another. Isn't that funny? Like, I just, I say that all the time. Like, I think you're all crazy when we decided to be in the altars and realized that we need to do all the other stuff when we all have anxiety. <laughs> can't do anything like no everyone has anxiety and social anxiety and then some of us have adhd and some have a little bit of the autism and so we all get together and it's a very interesting but it it is still like what's the best because i remember book bonanza you could like uh, get um a little sticker to say no hugs please and Mm -hmm. I love that. So you could choose like if you're okay with hugs and no hugs. And outer readers, Mm -hmm. they all like, we all walk around like letting the other people know if you're okay to be hugged or not. And I thought it was like, this is such a bookish community that we all have anxiety. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing. Someone say, I don't want to hug. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was amazing. Like, do you want a high five? Do you want a fist bump? Do yeah. you want a shoulder bump? Like, do you want a sticker? I have yeah, a sticker and then, for like, you. I would take pictures and then some people wanted to hug me and I had no problem with it. And then other people had no hug me. So we just took pictures and just like side by side. 
and it wasn't a problem for me it's not a problem yeah. for them and I just thought it was like this is really like this is amazing that we understand each other and it's not mm-hmm. that pressure that we all know yes. too well yeah I've only been to one convention so far and it was a small one out, right outside of mm. my hometown um but I do have plans to be in Denver this April Ooh. 2024. So it's my first big convention because I didn't get to go to Book Bonanza last year and Aww. I won't get to go this year. Uh, I think but that's my okay. friend's going to be there, Emily Mayer. She is Ooh. contemporary romance. She's signing. I think this is, I don't know. No, I think Perry is going to be her first signing. But this year is the first time that she, because she has uh, severe anxiety. And she was actually with me in Book Bonanza because she was my assistant. I just brought her over. And then she thought it was like, okay, so you manage. <laughs> I think maybe it's going to be okay for me. And I was like, yeah, it's going to be okay for you. Uh, I should just announce today that she's going to be in Denver. And I got really excited. Like, she's really good. So if you have a chance... Mm-hmm to Fine. check her books there is low burn and they're just brushes and she has like a new pretend with me um it's a new series it's it's hometown and it's so like yeah like it's just it's just a little like it's warm i i just love it i love it a hug, a hug. sometimes we all you need a hug yeah the, the hometown, like the small town romances with the mechanic or the firefighter or the, you know, the police officer. It's it's like a hug. It's like coming home to have like your favorite food warm on the counter and just getting this giant hug from the person you love the most. It's like that. Exactly. That's the feeling. Oh, my God. That's the, yeah, that exactly the- like that. It's just home walk in and just smell yeah, the food. and I love it. I love a small town romance. I just think it's so precious mm-hmm. and it's so like, it's, it's, it's just there's something there that it makes you, yeah, it's just home. Small town romance is like everybody's younger sister that they <laughs> fight for. <laughs> You're like the- from the dark romance, the dark romance authors and girlies are like standing behind behind them. Like, Don't touch my little. Sister. And I feel too that it's almost a overcorrection because I'm from a small town and I definitely don't have that nice warm feelings towards. Uh, I had a really rough time, so and mm-hmm. uh, well, I'm I'm coming back in a few days. I'm gonna go to Brazil uh, with my baby for the first time, and I'm well. I'm very excited because my family is gonna meet the baby. I also like, I have very mixed feelings about the town. And then yeah. sometimes I read small town romance and I'm like, oh, it's just like, I wish that this, you know, like it was yeah. that warm and there was like, you know, so, and the woman that is a gossip, it's actually just well intended. Like, you know, like <laughs> everybody yes. has a heart of gold and the shenanigans are not hurtful. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. if only. If only, yeah. If so only. maybe that's why I love it so much. I feel, I feel like, no, this is overcorrecting here. <laughs> I need to fix something. Possible. So you said that was the opposite for you. What about? Um, I know I have some authors that feel like one of their characters speaks more to them, like they connect the mm. most with. Like obviously, I would feel like all of your characters have yeah. a piece of you, but. I would say, do you have one that you're like, that one I most relate with, like I put the most of myself in? Logan, when I sat down to write Logan and I knew she was going to have anxiety and I knew she was going to have panic attacks was something I wanted to talk about. I didn't realize how much, it was just my experience. Uh, So Mm -hmm. the thoughts in her head, the way she processed things, the way that she tries to do her best uh logan is me yeah there's like and like i was saying i was listening to the audiobook and like you just confirm and there's even like now and then i wrote that end of 2022 and was released in january 23 and i got pregnant i found out that i was pregnant in march 23 
So that was before I, babies were even the origin. Yeah. And I was listening now with my newborn and the way that even her process motherhood and her fears and some conversations she had with Alvaro. I had those conversations with my husband and I forgot I wrote them. Like some things of her, like you, like like we need to do this and needs to do properly and nah, nah, nah. and then I would just like breed like we had exactly the conversation and mm-hmm. I was just like this is wild that I wrote myself as a mother before being a mother <laughs> but I think it was just genuine what's me and in the anxiety mm-hmm. i just wanted to like i just wanted to talk about anxiety and panic attacks in the most authentic way so i was like well i'm gonna tell my story and the way that affects me and i know not everybody was gonna translate with like being perfect and being scared and being afraid that people don't like you enough uh, because you were burdened because you're complicated like i know anxiety shows in a different way but that's how it shows on me so I was like, well, this is the only way I can make authentic. And then I don't realize that I think I did a really good job writing myself because I actually <laughs> predict the future <laughs> because her approach to motherhood, it's a hundred percent me. <laughs> and it's really funny because she like, you know, I'm Latina, I'm an immigrant and I write about loads of my, my female characters are Latinas, are immigrants, uh, have a blended family, are Afro-Latina, I'm Afro-Latina. And then it's in the rich white girl that <laughs> I put my whole personality. <laughs> like, how that happened? It's just like, yeah, she's, yeah, oh, I, yeah, exactly. I'm like, you know what? And then I said, <laughs> I said to my friend the other day, and I was like, you know what? I feel that I, I predicted the future, um, and I wrote my motherhood in Logan. But you know what? If I'm going to predict the future, I cannot like, predict her penthouse or something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if I'm going to manifest something, why it's the motherhood anxiety? Mm-hmm. I want <laughs> I want the money, the penthouse. Like, yeah. excuse you. <laughs> I love that even though she, for everyone else, this, their perspective of Logan was like this uppity kind of like, I have to be perfect. Like you can obviously tell that they can, they can see she's got some anxiety, but they feel, they feel like it's just mm. control issues. But like, for me, I related so much to that of having that persona of like, I have so much anxiety of needing to feel like I've done it the right way and I've perfected it and everything is planned out to the umph degree and that it's all in line and I have a plan and I'm like, I have a fallback plan if something else happens and lining all of that up makes you really closed off because you're Mm -hmm. so much in your head all the time. And in the past couple of years, I've gotten better about it. Thanks to my (laughs) husband, but (laughs) real Relate, being able to relate to her and all of that and how a lot of that came from being the mm. oldest child and and having to feel like I have to do it right or I'm the biggest disappoint, yeah. disappointment. I, like I have to set the example for my siblings or they're going to fall yeah, off. It's a resp- like, yeah, that makes sense because I'm an only child, but I... I grew up with my dad really sick. So I grew up with the responsibility of not being the problem because we had somebody else that needed us. So I was the good kid. I was the good kid. Perpetual, the perpetual good kid. Even now, like my mom would tell stories about me, how uh, I never cry in public. I would never, any tantrums. I would never, like and she's telling because she's so proud that she had the good kid. And I always like really good at school. And there was a point that we really like didn't have money, but she wanted to keep me in private schools because it was just better. So she just went around to meet schools for me to talk to the principals to get a scholarship. And I did. And I lived my whole life in a scholarship. And it was just like, 
she is very proud, but I see an anxious child in the stories. So that that mm -hmm. makes sense because if you have a lot of siblings and you need to be the responsible person, I needed to be a responsible person because there was somebody else getting the attention and I didn't mm -hmm. have time to like, I, like I cannot refuse to eat today because like there's something mm -hmm. else going on that's way more important. And I don't resent, it's just like the way the families go, you know, like shit happens and what we gotta do, like. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, I was really scared when I wrote Logan because um, Jesus, uh, this book is out and is a hundred percent my husband who said it's done. You might as well publish, even if it's the last one that you do. And Santana, Santana Knox, which is like one of my best friends. And she was just like, I need you to shut up now. <laughs> I was tough love. I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> but I was really scared because I felt that people were going to think Logan was unlikable. And that is a team through that. Like she thinks she's so unlikable. She doesn't think that she is yeah. warm and receptive and, and all the things. She doesn't think that she, people like her. And I was so scared for her. I was like, I'm very protective of Logan. I know I put myself too much into this, into a point that if people don't like Logan, I know they don't like me. And I don't know if I'm ready for that. And that shouldn't, like, you know, when you write something, you need to remember it's out in the world. And everybody that mm -hmm. gets that book, it's their book. You know, like, you know, your English teacher when they're telling the literature and they're saying like the author reflect the blue that meant their depression. Like, no, he, he it was just blue, you know, like mm. it's literally that it's like when yeah. you read the book, everybody's yeah. going to say whatever they want to say, because it's their book now. It's belong to them. And my words mm -hmm. are going to be twisted in like good ways and bad ways and in the ways that reflect yeah. sometimes we get a book and we just mold what we want because it's something that we're going through like <laughs> i do that a lot like there is mm -hmm. books that i got through something and i'm like i love this book this book's perfect and then i go reread and it's not a really good book <laughs> like and it's just yeah. But I needed that at that time. And that made sense for me at that time. So like, mm -hmm. it's a very dangerous road to put so much of yourself in something. Because mm -hmm. you're like, it's not mine. And the moment I hit publish, it's everybody else too. And I need to be okay with it. So mm -hmm. I was giving myself in a level mm -hmm. that I never did before. And I'm like, I'm literally exposing so much of myself. And that's going to be a comment section about my anxiety and my, like, my social issues. Like, and it's wild to be like. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Please let me. But also was, that was like, uh, like, you know, when you start, you People say to you, don't read reviews, don't go on Goodreads. But we all liars mm -hmm. and we all read all the reviews in the beginning. Yep, we do it. But there's every yep. author has a mm -hmm. moment that they switch and say, I cannot anymore because this is not productive mm -hmm. anymore. When you're a small author and you're getting 30 reviews, it's like it's manageable. But then suddenly it's mm -hmm. you can't anymore. And it, and Keepsake was my book that I'm like, oh, I don't read reviews anymore. It was that moment because I'm like, it's too much. And people have the right to like or dislike mm -hmm. Logan. And I cannot take to my heart every single time that they're like, not okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, somebody's one star that they did not like is someone else's five star. And let me tell you what, for me, keepsake with a five star. Absolutely. 100%. The very top will recommend it to all of my friends. I, t I actually bought the ebook for one of my <laughs> friends. Like I was like, you need this. So it's sent. And she was like, 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And I, was I like, do that too. You're welcome. Like, I just need to, I, I need everybody to go with me in this ride. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, let me know when you get there. You'll know, but just yeah. let me know when you get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, I knew, you know, I was really happy when everybody actually got excited about it. And there was so many Logans. It wasn't just me. It was so, yeah. there's like, and I got no. uh, something that never happened before. It was like people actually reaching out on DMs and wanting to talk. Like, there was like, I know this is like, can we talk a little bit about the relationships? I just want to, like, and they were not, like, it was not a, there was not criticism. There was not, like, it was genuine, like, can we talk about this family as, like, like, I'm telling you a gossip and be like, yeah. what you think she was thinking? Like, you know, <laughs> which is really fun yeah. because you're like, oh, my God, I, this it family is. is so in people's minds that they're literally like, can we talk a little bit more? <laughs> Will we ever get more of anyone from Keepsake? Yeah. This was because I was listening to the audiobook. And then I finished and I sat down and I wrote 10,000 on Dashbook. I just like, mm. it was a, <laughs> it was my literally heart. like, oh, like I just could like it was in my mind. And I was also protective of him because he's such a teenager in this book and he is yes. all of us as a teenager. He is difficult and super protective and it switch around like of being sounding like a kid to sound like an adult. And so I was protective of him as well. I was like, he's not the easiest character, but he's a teenager. If I make him too, like too wise, you know, when it's, fake those kind of teenagers mm -hmm. and those kind of kids yeah it's just not it's just not genuine so i was like no he mm -hmm. needs to be a little bit annoying because he's a teenager he needs to think that he knows better yeah uh, so i was a protective of him mm -hmm. as well because i'm like they're gonna understand that he's just a baby <laughs> <laughs> he's just a baby yeah <laughs> I did, I did really love the epilogue. And I would love to get his point of view. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, oh, I love him. Yeah. He, I, his attitude throughout the entire book was just like one of those, I know better than you, but also it was very much like, <laughs> And I was like, if that was not me as a 16-year-old. Yeah. I felt like. I thought I knew everything. And it's like, when Alvin is calling him a dumbass, like, you're a dumbass. You think you're going to, like, <laughs> you're going to. Yeah, like, 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 he is so, like, yeah, he is. Because he's just 16. It was, yeah, it you're just dumb. dumb. What are we going to do? Uh, no, yeah, I love him, and I'm very happy. And I actually really like his relationship with Vienna. I just think it's very sibling, like, protective, and at the same time, like, he's just mm -hmm. constantly is just annoyed by her. She didn't do anything. She's just annoyed oh. that she's there. <laughs> Their banter was absolutely it. That is the banter between my <laughs> siblings and I. We are constantly picking on one another, bothering mm. one another. I will call my siblings randomly in the middle of the day and be like, are you awake? I know you're a night owl, but I I'm up. It's 8 o'clock. <laughs> you need to get up. And they'll be so mad. So mad. Like, we're just at it. They will text me in the middle of the night, and I'm like, you know I'm, uh, I'm not looking yeah. at it. Yeah. Uh, and I really like, and there is already <laughs> wrote a few scenes of, old dash with oh, older vienna and i think it was so i think they're like seven six years so he's 30 and she's 22 and the book now and i was really like i was really excited to to put that realization of them like how that relationship especially because i feel i shouldn't be saying so much <laughs> but i feel that it's like 
a little bit different because they had more of a childhood of like with their mother and the abuse and everything. Mm -hmm. While Lachlan, he had a hundred percent Logan and Alvaro mm -hmm. growing up in a penthouse. So while he had the trauma, he he had a really happy life in the end even though, of course, he, he missed his mom. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it was just different. And I feel that the divide is yeah. right there. And mm -hmm. so I always thought like, oh, when they grow. And my husband, this sister that we live just beside is his little sister that's six years younger than him, that he literally mm -hmm. uh, just annoyed her so much growing up. And he just says, I just remember her screaming all the time. And she's the godmother of our son. We moved, like, she moved here in the small town. We left Dublin and followed her here. <laughs> so I'm like, you say, you say she's annoying, but like, you know, she literally, we, we, we live, live next, next door. door. <laughs> 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 oh goodness goodness that's that's crazy so obviously you said you were reading and writing all of your life um what is your favorite genre to read Ooh. to read is it the same as writing well, uh i did contemporary for a long long time only that and then i had a full year only reading alien and monster for I, I felt that I never read it ever. And then I catch up with everybody. It was it was 250 books in 2022. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, you know what? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> um, there was a time I like to like if I if it's something that never attracted me, like, you know, I was not really big in historical. So I just went to my friend and like she loves historical and I'm like who I start here and she gave me names and I started mm -hmm. reading. I'm kind of like this, like I want to check everything. I am not very big in traditional uh, publishing anymore. I just try to read indie gotcha. as I just, I mm -hmm. know that when sometimes I buy something and it just makes someone's day and yeah. you know but also because um not that i won't read traditional like it, i read whatever i'm interested in it's just like sometimes i try to do independent work authors like i'm always gonna give them um you know the preference i think that's yeah yeah, yeah i think absolutely. that's the only thing the rest i just if i'm missing out on something i want to read it <laughs> Mm -hmm. FOMO <laughs> for sure I have I yeah, have it bad but that doesn't work like I do have in a genre kind of way but not in a like a book that everybody's talking about mm -hmm. I feel that saturated mm -hmm. and like in a way that I know too much about it you know when something okay. everybody don't shut up about a specific book and there's so many videos and i get interested but there's a point that i like mm -hmm. i feel that i know so much that i'm not interested anymore so it needs to be uh, a middle ground <laughs> that i'm like <laughs> yeah there are a lot of people who will not read sarah j mass for that because reason. everybody's because spoiled. they don't there's yeah yeah there's so much of it out in videos. Yeah. That like... happened with Bright. When Bright came out, I was really excited because mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? This is, sounds great. The cover is beautiful. And, yeah. and then I was reading something. Oh, I think it was Santana new book. She was annoying me because she wanted to read. <laughs> we, we're like this <laughs> each other. Like, I don't have... I love Santana. I, I don't have sisters. I have a Santana, and we're like this to each other. Like if we write out a word, the other needs to say the okay. And so she had her new book all almost all done, and I still haven't paid attention mm -hmm. in in the document she sent me. 
You're talking about crossed yeah, over? Yeah, I was crossed over. So I was like, and she's like, I'm not publishing this. If you don't read, it's going to be your fault that I missed the pre-orders. So, okay, okay. So I was reading that. And I was like, I need to, to read this before I get another message. And then everything escalated and there was everywhere and bright was everywhere and was like all the videos and then now i was actually today mm. i was in a mall and i saw it and i was like oh. and i didn't buy it because i felt like i know so much yeah, yeah like yeah. but i will forget and then i will pick up like in six months i forget all the videos i saw <laughs> So my thing is, is if you're not spoiling, but you're giving like outside of the book scenarios, those draw me in. So like the reason I started reading Fourth Wing is because somebody was like, based on these characters and this personality, this is how they would dance in a club. That scene never happened in Fourth Wing, but that video made me laugh. And I was like, okay, now I need to see what these personalities like more about these personalities and i devoured that is such a good them. idea and now and now i can't get into iron flame because i know it ends on a Aww. cliffhanger because literally spoilers from the first couple days of it being out and i have no motivation yeah. to take but it there's a, uh, something i realized None. as well something that is a spoiler for one person it's not to the other and that's why sometimes it's so yeah. hard to navigate because sometimes mm -hmm. it's really hard for me to go through like content warnings because uh, on content warnings and trigger warnings are different things that people are putting together so that's a, a, mm -hmm. another problem so sometimes i'm gonna read the trigger warnings because i'm like you know i don't read non-con so I I just, mm -hmm. if I'm reading a, a dark romance, I'm going to check it out. And then in the middle of that, there's some content warnings there. Shouldn't be there. They're not triggered. They're just contents of the book. And then I'm like, oh, because it's spoiled. You know? Mm -hmm. And then people, yeah. are, we're, I'm, I'm saying people, but like, I think we all confuse because it triggers are something very personal. So you never know. Like I have my alpha readers and my beta readers always say like, if I miss something, just let me know because some, some things for me mm -hmm. are not going to be triggers. And of course for other people will be, but that is a problem too. Like, so sometimes someone are genuinely just thinking, oh, I'm going to hype this book. And I'm like, oh, like, you know, and it's just, yeah, there's no way. There's no way to know. Yeah, because some people think that knowing the tropes going into the book is giving you the storyline. Mm. So, like, you know what's going to happen. Uh, so then you're technically spoiling. And I'm like, uh, they're giving you an outline, yeah, a guide. I, no, I so, de depend. Like, I like... I like tropes when they're before. Like, I, I sound like an old lady. Mm. I used to like the internet. <laughs> But I used to like when it was more like small town, age gap. I think we also got too specific. Mm -hmm. And then now it's like brothers, best yeah. friends. And then sometimes it's like um, micro tropes are a thing now. And then I'm like, okay, we're getting mm -hmm. too specific. I want, I like the guidelines. I like to be like, I don't like yes. second chance. But then again, I wrote, I, I, read a book that was second chance accidentally and i really like it so like you know so you never know you never so, know so you know sometimes i like to just be like oh i love age gap i love age gap so if there's like mm -hmm. age gap with a small town or with sports like there's some combinations i love it and but don't mm -hmm. give me too much don't give me like yeah. Don't tell me everything. Yeah. Let me to be like, come here. I I have this saucy combination for you. And I'll be like, woo. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is my last question. And we can wrap up and I will let you get back to your <laughs> yeah. precious baby. What <laughs> do you have a favorite 
book slash series and why is it your favorite? Okay. Uh, I don't know. Look, I have, let's talk about, it's very hard, isn't it? Like you asking so hard. I do have a comfort reads. So every time life is difficult, I read Ruby Dixon. Mm -hmm. I am reading those aliens. Like, but I don't know. Do you you ever read uh, Ice Planet Barbarians? No, but it's on my list. It was recommended to me recently. Because it's like... um, like you know, it's abduction and and they're in a they're in a little village. So it's really funny how it's mm-hmm. alien, but it's also a small town. Oh, you know, because okay. the, all the women are okay. there and all the aliens are there, and they create a mm-hmm. village, and you kind of like it, l- reading about this couple, and you know the other couple. Like it is a small town, and it's wild to tell you. So there is okay. that goodness and familiarity and then like you know that you're gonna see whoever book and book 20 and whatever but you're here for this Mm -hmm. and and i'm in the point that she has like another uh, two spin-off series that the kids from this first book for nice planet by bear already 12 years old so you kind of like it's literally your family so it feels comfort for me when you pick up those books and you're like, I'm going to follow. Mm-hmm. And I have Cassandra Gannon that no one talks about, even though she's brilliant. And, oh my God, mm-hmm. I, I am so devoted about spreading the word about Cassandra Gannon. I have <laughs> her book, like a quote from her book, tattooed on me. But she does like fantasy mm-hmm. And the first time, the first thing I read from her was um, kind of a series, like a, f- a fairy tale that she meshes fairy tales together, and she meshed in a very brilliant way. That like I was one recent one that I was reading for her. Um, it was like um, Camelot and all this kind of stuff. And there's oh no, there was the sheriff. There was Robin Hood, and. She, there was like oh. parts of the story that in her outer notes, she explained that it's part of a song and poems. Like she really dives in into mm-hmm. the legends and pick that and transform into a fantasy romance. And it's just Ooh. done so smart. So if you read Cassandra, you also pay attention in her outer notes because sometimes she goes through her thought process and is just very interesting how she got there <laughs> so there you go that was, that's my two say less <laughs> oh okay i have a list of things yeah to i up. give you homework <laughs> now a backlist i got a backlist to research <gasps> yes please <laughs> for anyone who didn't know we plugged uh, Santana Knox's a brand new book coming out soon. I'm oh, it's so good. excited. How's it over? I, I read it and I was like floored. We posted a <laughs> teaser earlier and I was like, I... no, yeah, no, it, it was, it's good. I was like floor and it's nothing that anyone is expecting. And I think I'm more excited for that because I love when, we surprise readers and they are like, don't see it happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, and crossover does that because it's nothing that anyone's it's imagining. It's not it. So I'm like, it's going to be amazing. I know I said one <laughs> last question, but do you have anything new happening? Anytime uh, we know Keepsake just, the audio yeah, just keepsake, happened. The audio just happened. So that was really exciting. I, um, I wrote the Omega verse. A white shoes super cozy on valentine's day came out so it's a white shoes mm-hmm. in like a snowy Swiss- switzerland Um it's it's a novella so it's really easy and going and i'm writing the sequel for that and it's gonna be based here in ireland so i'm very excited because i never get to write irish Ooh. characters 
Um, and I'm just finishing that book, actually. I So it's going to go to editing soon. And then, yeah, and I'm writing also Dash's book. So. Yay, so yeah. much coming. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm so excited. But thank you so much for joining me. I had so much fun talking with you. Now I get to do all the things. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun. You were great. It was so much fun. Thanks. <laughs>